Hey guys, welcome back. We are on day two of writing our scientific argument. Remember yesterday we went through the process of what it looks like to have evidence, um, the reasoning, and then restating the claim, the therefore. Okay, so today what we're going to do is you are going to focus just on our subclaim. Okay, the subclaim is bacteria from the fecal transplant can fill up the space in the gut, which limits the food and space for invading harmful bacteria. Remember, we want to find evidence so that we can present this information as a scientific argument so that we can get funding, okay? We want strong, convincing pieces of evidence so that that funding can take place and that we actually um, can present it uh, for those that are in higher power. All right, so we actually have three pieces of evidence that we're going to review with you guys. And this is actually already listed out in your packet that you guys got yesterday in class. If you were not in class yesterday, this will also be available online too. Okay, and so when we were looking at our reasoning tool, I'm going to pull this up too. We had a couple of items already listed underneath the evidence column. And so this is showing us here, the data with the pie charts is an example of the evidence from patients uh, 23's case study from week seven to week nine. And so we can use this graphic to help explain why bacteria from fecal transplant can fill up the space in the gut, limiting food and space for invading harmful bacteria, okay? Our next piece of evidence comes from the experiment with the mice. And we know that mice and humans have very similar gut microbiomes. And so that's why we like to use them in science research because of their similarities. And so we have this experiment with 20 healthy mice and 20 unhealthy mice. And they were both exposed to the same amount of salmonella bacteria. And we saw the differences in what happened there as a result of that exposure. And then lastly, we have the article that we read a while back about the human microbiome. And so this is when we saw oh, those eyelash mites close up that were ah, so gross and creepy. Um, but this is going to tell us about bacteria and how they are living things that need food and living space for survival. All right, so what you guys are going to do is now can, and when we look at say the data from week seven and week nine, you are going to have to kind of uh, infer what you're seeing. And it doesn't just say, here are the answers, or this is why. You're gonna have to look at the information and you're gonna have to do some critical thinking. What does the transition from week seven to week nine, how does that affect the fecal transplant? What does that bring? So the patient 23 case study for week seven and week nine, this matters because week seven, the transition between week seven and week nine presents itself as this. <laughs> How whatever information you are inferring, you are building. But remember, we are looking for not just correct information, we're looking at for strong. We wanna convince the reader that this is why, this is why we need to do fecal transplant, what is supporting. Okay, and then again at the therefore, um, so here's all of our evidence and the same thing with the salmonella. Now, when we're looking at picture graphs like those, we're inferencing and we're synthesizing and putting that information to draw that we're, and we're drawing from, okay? When we're looking at the human microbiome article, we have this evidence. What does that quote from the article, what does that bring to support the claim? Okay, and that is our why. This matter is the part that is our why. Why is this important? Remember when we did the COLA? We said the 4ML. Well, it wasn't convincing initially because we didn't know what 4ML was. This is the place that you can ex describe and explain and give great detail for why something is, okay? And then the last part is the therefore. Now it's suggested that when you're starting this, we're always gonna start with our evidence and we're gonna start actually with the therefore because the therefore is just reiterating, here is what the sub claim is bringing. So for example, on this one, the patient 23 case study data from week seven. Well, we're gonna skip the why right now. Therefore, because bacteria from the fecal transplant can fill up the space in the gut, limiting food and space for invading harmful bacteria. Now, we skipped a part. We wanna go back and we wanna backfill this matters because this is where we put in that why. So what you put in there should draw you to the therefore. 
Okay. I just want to just to, real quick, just to reiterate, we are going to see your claim or your subclaim for this one, your subclaim twice in each paragraph with supportive evidence. So we're going to say it at the beginning and then the therefore section is what we say at the very end. It's kind of like the pretty bow on a package that ties it all together. And if you guys, and I know for ELA, you guys have been doing, you'll do like um, a, like your, I don't know what you guys call it, your intro sentence and then your, your conclusion sentence or paragraph or whatever. You're starting it and then you're drawing it together at the end. And in, in between, it's like the hamburger bun. You have the top part and the bottom part and all the good stuff is in the middle. Okay. Right. And so this middle part, just as we've really emphasized the this matter section in the middle is where your brain cells are going to kick into gear and really try to make sense of the information given to you. So within Amplify, what we've done in class, we have presented you a silver platter with all this really great evidence, but now you guys are the ones who are going to make that connection and why this is important. And so we can, and I would love for you guys to go ahead and just fill in this first example. So on number one, when we have on your paper here in your packet from patient 23's case study data for week seven and nine, we can go ahead and number one, we can restate the subclaim in that therefore section on the far right hand column, but then we can go ahead and say that this matters because this evidence shows that fecal transplant added more bacteria to the gut. That was in the week nine, right? That pie chart was all filled back up again, which took up space and could have prevented the C. difficile from growing more. So we address both items. Number one, in week seven, we know that the C. diff showed up, that red section of the pie. And then in week nine, that red section was gone. That represented the C. diff, that disappeared. And then the pie chart was all nice and full again with all the really good healthy bacteria. And right now would be a good place back on that last slide is it push pause and fill it in and then continue playing after you have this part, this one's given to you, okay? Now, for the rest of your activity today, um, you, this is, we're talking, we think that this will probably take you anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, no more than 30 minutes. You are going, we have given you two other crucial pieces of evidence, okay? On this, you are gonna fill in the therefore first and then go back and tell why it matters for both the salmonella bacteria, which is the mice, there was the mice activity or the mice experiment, and then the other one is the human microbiome article. Now, on this page, there are two more pieces of evidence that we're asking you to find. Now, where are you gonna find that information? This is you, you're gonna have to get out there and you're gonna have to research a little bit. Uh, Mrs. Kinzer put together a quick, uh, just like a, a Google sheet or a Google, um, Form, slide. or what was it? Google slide. Slide. slide, sorry, too many Googles. <laughs> a Google slide that she even pulled everything out for you, okay? Then you can go any of your articles. They should be in up front in your library. Mm -hmm. You can go back to like the human microbiome, the C. difficile, the salmonella article, any of those. You can go back and you can find any of the charts, any of the verbiage, any of that stuff to come up with your evidence, okay? Yep. Um, with that being said, I do remind you, and I had this question today, Mrs. Kinzer, someone said, can I just Google it and find evidence? Nope, you need to only use the information that we have been using in class. Articles, all of the activities and things that we have done, those are your resources that you need to pull your evidence from. Well, that's, I'm really, really glad that somebody asked that question because no, Google does not have the information about patient 23. Guys, this yep. stuff is so specific that everything you need is an Amplify. It is all right there. And we're going to put together another beautiful package of Google Slides with, oh, remember this article, this article. We'll have it all listed out along with the graphics and the experiment so that it's a little bit more easier access for you guys. Okay. All right. So that's the end of today's lesson. Uh, your job at home is to fill in this reasoning tool. Find two more additional pieces of evidence when you come back to class. Have a great day. Good day, guys.